good morning, everybody. Um, I uh, thank the organizing committee and Dr. Uh, Kamini for having invited me to be a part of this discussion. I really am amazed how Dr. Uh, Kamini excels herself year after year. Coming to the uh, topic of prediction of preterm birth in multiple pregnancy. Now, what is it about prematurity that worries us? I think all morning we have been hearing about this. The complications of prematurity enlightened by Dr. Uh, Murli Darpai. Um, not only the immediate complications, also the delayed complications, learning disabilities, cerebral palsy, chronic lung disease. Also the economic burden it places on the patient, the health sector, and the country as a whole, not uh, to belittle the emotional uh, components. I think we've discussed about the emotional components as well. So what is it that uh, we are currently doing when a patient comes with preterm labor? We order for investigations, we administer antibiotics, roll out the tocolytics, give the steroid prophylaxis, myself for neuroprotection. Now, do all patients who come with preterm labor deliver preterm? Are we justified in giving all patients who uh, are coming with these problems all the drugs that may or may not be required? Now, if we are able to predict, then forewarned is forearmed, and we really don't need to treat all of them, but only the high-risk mothers, and also elucidate which of the apparent low-risk mothers were actually at uh, risk of preterm labor and institute a preterm uh, action. Now, uh, to uh, identify or predict asymptomatic multiple pregnancy patients who are at a high risk, now what are the parameters? This is not just a busy slide. This just goes to show how many parameters we have been looking at and trying. So if we were to classify them, we look at the historical factors. Pro predominant among them, I think Dr. Um, Srinivas also spoke about periodontal disease infections. Now, classical history is of preterm, uh, prior preterm birth or cervical insufficiency. But if you look at the general pregnancy characteristics, multiple gestation stands out. Multiple gestation in itself is a cause of um, preterm pregnancy. Now, the actual causes why preterm uh, birth happens in multiple pregnancy are multifactorial. Uh, it's definitely different from singletons. Many of it is unclear. The Society for Fetal and Maternal Medicine uh, in its statement as late as in August 19, have acknowledged that despite twins having been well represented in many of the sti sli uh, studies on preterm birth, we have failed to identify any particular uh, predictive test. So what causes preterm birth in multiple pregnancy? Um, intrauterine infections has been discussed quite a bit. Cervical insufficiency, the increased stretch or distension, increased release of corticotrophin releasing hormone or uh, substances like surface pro protein A, surfactant protein A, they increase the myometrial contractility and they contribute to preterm parturition. Let us not forget that almost one third of these pregnancies are iatrogenic uh, causes um, for preterm birth. Um, twin pregnancies, triplets lead to increased preeclampsia. We see more of uh, fetal growth restriction, TTTS, and spontaneous uh, preterm births as in PR, PPROM. So let us look at the ultrasonic um, predictors. The cervix has been extensively studied, the length, the gestational age, um, the serial measurements, and uh, many others. So let us discuss one by one. Cervical length has, I think, by far stood the test of time. Unfortunately, in symptomatic women, this does not help us. It is uh, symptomatic women with multiple pregnancies. Cervical length is of low predictive value. But uh, cervical length measured at the age of 20 to 24 weeks is a good predictor. So we see if we have a cervical length of less than 25 millimeters, at 20 to 24 weeks, we have a 25% of them delivering before 28 weeks. And if it's less than 20, 42% deliver before 32, and 62% deliver before 34 weeks. So this has been revalidated in many of the studies, but it is uh, uh, important to realize that for symptomatic um, uh, twin pregnancies, we do not have this as a uh, factor. 
Now, the timing of the scans, this is also important. Um, we have, uh, uh, there have been uh, 12 international cohort studies done, and we have found that the optimal time for predicting preterm births before 28 weeks would be screening before 18 weeks or at around 18 weeks. And if you want to know the um, uh, predictive value of deliveries between 28 and 36 weeks, that would probably be a, be a better screening at around 22 weeks. It is also of a good negative predictive value. If you have a cervix of about 6.5 centimeters, I think you can safely say this patient will reach term. And 42, 43 millimeters at 22 to 24 weeks will also provide the same uh, negative predictive value. So for uh, twins, I think it is better to do it at around 18 weeks. Now, it is not just the timing. Now, uh, studies have shown that serial cervical length monitoring is also predictive. There are four different patterns. One is a stable pattern, one is an early rapid shortening, and a late shortening, and a uh, early shortening, and a plateauing later. We find that preterm one, uh, the pattern two, where the um, early shortening happens, is, most, is, is the most predictive of preterm twins, preterm delivery in twins. Now, um, serial uh, cervical length also, we look at the rate of shortening. The, uh, any shortening of about 0.2 centimeters per week is highly predictive of delivery before 35 weeks, whereas a 0.1 centimeter for, uh, uh, per week would probably tell you this baby will reach borderline term. The uterocervical angle, the angle formed between the lower uterine segment and the cervical canal, if it is more than 95 degrees, is predictive of delivery before 37 weeks. But if it is more than 105, you're likely to have a preterm. The new kid on the block is the central zone of uh, fetal adrenal gland, which is uh, supposed to be the single best predictor with a predictive value of more than 49.5%. And this predicts of delivery before within seven days. I shall not elaborate on sonoelastography, which uh, basically is an objective measurement of the cervical um, uh, softness. I think Dr. Govind Raj is supposed to be speaking on it. Now, other ultrasound parameters include cervical funneling seen before 24 weeks. This is predictive of prematurity, 7% vis-a-vis 0.7% in our controls. Again, in symptomatic multiple pregnancies, this is of no value. Presence of amniotic sludge in the presence of a short cervix correlates extremely well with extreme prematurity. Other indices have come and gone, including uterine artery, pulsatility index, middle cerebral artery, etc., but they really have not shown much value. But what is surprising is, though individually each of these parameters have limited value, a combination of these, anterior cervical length, uh, anterior cervical angle with the cervical length and maternal characteristics, shoot up the predictive value to about 40%. And so uh, various combinations have been tried in an effort to improve the uh, predictability. And so combinations with biomarkers have also been made. Now, what are biomarkers? Now, I think we all know inflammation is definitely there as a cause of um, prematurity. So whether it's infection or inflammation, there is a release of pro-inflammatory cytokines leading to leukocytosis, apoptosis, premature rupture of membranes, cervical ripening, and the onset of premature labor. Now, what are the biomarkers which we have assessed so far? Fetal fibronectin, interleukins, placental alpha macroglobulin, and phosphorylated insulin-like growth factor binding protein, and cervical acetate levels. And I think, uh, like Dr. Uh, Chandrasekhar mentioned, CRP should be here as one of the markers. I think we shall definitely look into that as well. What is fetal fibronectin? It is an extracellular matrix glycoprotein found between the chorion and the decidua. Naturally, it should have become undetectable after 18 weeks when the chorion and the decidua totally fuse. And so presence of fibronectin indicates a mechanical or an inflammatory disruption of the chorio cho chorion decidual interface. Now, naturally, this should have been a good uh, biomarker for preterm labor. However, Repeated meta-analysis have shown that it has no role in asymptomatic multiple pregnancies 
and um, the Cochrane Review did not find enough evidence to recommend this as a marker. But if the fetal fibronectin is um, uh, combined with cervical length, then you find that automatically the predictive values increase. Um, they have found various studies. Matthews uh, found that it was uh, so, uh, helpful in predicting preterm labor even in multiple pregnancy. And a higher predictive, positive predictive value is found when there is a combination of um, a positive fibronectin with cervical length at 22 to 30, uh, 22, 22 weeks. Now the combinations have done so well that in England they have what we call a quip app. Now this is a clinical decision making tool. It incorporates the predictive model combining uh, history. So it has taken the history uh, plus it has taken the gestational age, the quantitative fetal fibronectin values and the cervical length. They have found promising studies to the extent that they have instituted a multicentric trial. Interleukins are another set of biomarkers that are uh, released by the inflammatory processes. This is in response to the stress which um, uh, triggers the preterm labor. Interleukin 1 seems to be playing a very key role. We have found that interleukin 6 and 8 levels in the cervical vaginal fluid were associated with the delivery within 7 days. Uh, but the in, uh, interleukin 1 beta has shown a very statistically significant predictive value. It has been seen that for every unit increase in interleukin 1 beta, there is a 7.2 times more likely chancehood of uh, delivering prematurely. Other less uh, popular um, biomarkers include the placenta alpha macroglobulin which is synthesized in the decidua in high concentrations and it was used more as a predictor for rupture of membranes um, because it was easy, uh, this would leak out into the cervical vaginal fluid only when there was a rupture. But recently these seem to be showing a higher positive predictive value than fetal fibronectin in predicting preterm labor. Phosphorylated insulin-like growth factor binding protein, also se uh, uh, secreted by the placental decidual cells, are predictive of patients delivering within 48 hours. Now, recent uh, uh, pros prospective observational studies have shown they have a high negative predictive value, meaning it's useful as a rule-out test. Cervical acetate levels. This is basically the microbiomics of uh, the vaginal uh, flora. So when we have seen in the past that when there is an increase in the anaerobes in the vagina, they secrete uh, more than uh, adequate uh, cervical uh, vaginal uh, acetate levels, which are markers for uh, delivering prematurely. Now, in summary of the predictive preterm birth test as we have now, it's only the cervical length and the fetal fibronectin or a more uh, a better would be the combination of the two. And for symptomatic uh, threatened labor in multiple pregnancy, nothing but fetal fibronectin maybe. So what does the future have for us? Proteomics. Now, around uh, by around 16 to 17 weeks of pregnancy, there are enough and more proteins that are produced in the fetal maternal uh, unit and uh, which are uh, essential for the growth of the fetus and the uterus and tapping these metabolic profiling of these uh, amino uh, amniotic fluid uh, proteins should be able to help us in identifying factors for the risk of preterm birth. Metabolomics is the study of metabolize. Again, um, there are hundreds and thousands of particles that are uh, available in the um, amniotic fluid or in the maternal blood at various stages. If we are able to locate or um, isolate these, these should be able to tell us. The preterm sambas and scope studies utilize these metabolomic techniques in different populations. In fact, a recent study by Samba has shown that uh, they uh, studied two various, uh, two different um, ethnic profiles and they have found uh, association between preterm birth and elevated levels of alkanes which uh, subject um, po uh, pollution and smoking as another an, uh, addition to the risk factors. 
screening, uh, a recent study as uh, late as in May 2019 this year uh, has shown they have studied uh, cases uh, and using this metabolomic techniques have identified four different groups in the maternal blood that are uh, at, uh, that sh show as a high risk for developing preterm uh, deliveries. These include bile acids, prostaglandins, vitamin D, and fatty acids and conjugates. All these show promise that we are reaching somewhere. Uh, another study, if you look at the sensitivity and specificity of this, this is only in the range of around 60s and uh, to 80. However, if you were to add cervical length to this, you see that it shoots up to 90s. Now, all this tells us that in, okay, we still have genomics to go through. I think Dr. James Padbury has done a wonderful job of telling us. The only problem I think would be if it was to become clinically available, it's going to cost um, a lot of money. We also have cell-free and uh, RNA and cell-free DNA particles that have been identified in women who are at a risk of delivering preterm. So in all this, we need to deliver a multivariate uh, model. A recent study by uh, Dimin has shown that analysis of um, uh, a group of uh, factors like cervical length, previous preterm delivery, smoking, number of fetuses, mo uh, monochorionicity, and a low educational level, when combined and uh, subjected to analysis, has shown a positive predictive value in correlating it with premature pregnancy. What is nice is recently a study has published as a multivariate model from India. The, um, what is different about this study is that the parameters they have taken are what is applicable to the populace where, which they are catering to. So they have taken factors like type of work, the number of meals a person really gets, hours of day rest, education, weight gain, the number of antenatal visits this patient's received, and the type of family. And they gave it different uh, values, and they found that it correlated beautifully with um, the pred uh, prediction of preterm birth. A, a risk score of 10 went on to give a predictive value of 91.6%. So in conclusion, I can say that no single biomarker has been evolved till date which possesses the sensitivity as well as the reliability for detection of spontaneous preterm birth. The cervical length measurement alone or with uh, fetal fibronectin is still the best we have. The same test does not hold good for singleton and multiple pregnancies and neither does it hold s good for both symptomatic and asymptomatic women. What we know is that preterm birth is a challenging, complex condition. It has multiple etiologic pathways, but there is hope. Newer research is showing promise. A combination of tests are providing better results than individual tests. So what we know need to do, the quest still continues to have a simple, non-invasive, inexpensive test which will be predictive for both symptomatic and asymptomatic women. It should be provided it should be performed early enough for us to institute remedial measures, otherwise it's of no value. And it should have a high likelihood ratio for a positive test and a low likely ratio for a negative test. So considering the multiple etiological pathways, there is a need to develop a better multivariate model, taking multiple and relevant parameters into consideration and evolving a foolproof model, a test or a scoring method to accurately predict preterm labor in multiple pregnancies or, or in fact even in singleton pregnancies so that we can devise ways to successfully prevent or arrest it. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. That was indeed an elaborate session and I think you covered everything that we could do in terms of predicting preterm labor. I think we'll take the questions at the end of the next speaker session as well. And uh, as obstetricians, we always think cervical length is the beginning and the end to assessment of the risk of preterm labor. But no, is there anything beyond it? Yeah, to explore.